The Sunlight Radio. Item number, SCP-5657. Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Producers. SCP-5657 is placed inside of a metal box with a small opening. This opening should be locked shut, and the metal box is to be placed inside of a 5x5 meter wooden room. The wooden room should also have a simple pad lock at the entrance of the room, and contain no windows or any possible way to view the sky. Only level 2 clearance and above are allowed to access the item. Description: SCP-5657 is a portable radio branded with a blank logo printed onto the back of it. The item's casing is wooden, with a clear, thin plastic coating the wooden casing. The item is measured 150 by 278 by 70 millimeters. This model was produced during the 19th century. The item also doesn't show any signs of damage. SCP-5657, when set to receive FM radio stations, the item doesn't transmit anything or simply gives off static. However, if the object is pointed towards a celestial body while being set to a frequency between 1.5 kHz and 40 blank point blank kHz, SCP-5657 will receive a message that lasts for 15 to 30 seconds. The celestial body in question has to give off some form of luminescence on its own, and have a mass equal or greater than 0.07 or 0.08 solar masses. How the item receives messages from these celestial bodies when they don't produce any frequencies, or radio waves to receive, is unknown. Furthermore, the message received from SCP-5657 vary in form, but come in four different types of messages, now being referred to as broadcast. Broadcast 1. Message will be almost entirely static, expect for a few phrases spoken now and then by a seemingly humanoid voice, 75% to be a male voice, slash 25% to be a female voice. These phrases normally consisting of words such as far or alone. A few seconds after the exact or similar like phrases, the humanoid voice will then start to repeat the word starfish for the remainder of the broadcast in a either angry, regretful, or displeasing tone. Broadcast 2. This broadcast will again contain a humandi odd voice, although it is always in a male voice. The voice will repeat the phrase five or church, and nothing else for the rest of its broadcast. Broadcast 3. This broadcast won't have any talking or sounds to it, besides an array musical instruments consisting of different pitches, tones, and frequencies. The sound played by the musical instruments will remain for the rest of the broadcast. Broadcast 4. This broadcast will contain a humanoid voice, primarily female. Their voice will always seem to be in a agitated or angry state, and the voice will mention something about a starfish in a hateful manner. After SCP-5657 completes its 15 to 30 second broadcast, a signal in Morse code will be received by SCP-5657. This signal in Morse code, when translated and arranged in a certain way, will provide an image. For broadcast 1, broadcast 2, or broadcast 3, their signals, when translated, provided this image below. However, signals from broadcast 4 and broadcast 1, on rare occasion, when translated, it will provide this image instead. It is believed that SCP-5657 has some connection to the Fifthist Church, although unlike other SCPs from the same Fifthist origin, long exposure to SCP-5657 will not entice any subject to want to become a member of the Fifthist Church. If more than one subject is listening to SCP-5657 at any given point during its broadcast, the subjects will only hear static or something in a language that they perceive as undesirable. However, if only one subject is listening to SCP-5657, then that subject will clearly understand SCP-5657's broadcast in their native language. Although this doesn't affect subjects who cannot perceive SCP-5657's broadcast either by having major or serve damaged in their ear, that reduces what the subject could normally hear from either 75 or 100 percent, or the subject was born deaf, not giving them the ability to listen in on SCP-5657's broadcast. Addendum. SCP-5657 was recovered in blank park on blank. The item was altered to the Foundation's attention when rumors around a small town in blank about a star-talking radio. When local residents of the town were asked to describe the item, they claimed that, yeah, if you change it on the channel, blank, and point it at a star or something like that, it'll give you a message of what the star is actually saying and stuff. It's pretty wild, man. 
All of the residents of the small town that were found spreading rumors about the item, or have known any information about the item beforehand, were given Class C amnestics. The item was later found on a table bench, being pointed near the blank constellation.